Hi, it's Richard here from the Siebel Hub. As many of you will know, it is a stated goal of the Siebel Hub to provide content for as many user types as possible. This demonstration aims to show you how to set up a basic dispatch board using Siebel service, Siebel IP15. The goal is to demonstrate the different steps in case you need to create a demonstration or a prototype, and also to highlight some of the issues we uncovered while doing it. So I'm going to begin by logging into Siebel Field Service and focusing on, first of all, the Administration Service menu, and I'm going to select Schedules. At the heart of our Siebel Field Service, we need to create a schedule, indicating when our employees will be available for work. Our schedule will be made up of work times, for example, for Monday to Friday. So I'm going to go ahead now and add a start day of Monday and end day of Friday and say that from 8 o'clock until 5 o'clock will be normal working. I'll add a second row in just a moment. Much of this information will be of use later on when we create other administrative information for the Siebel scheduler and the appointment booking system. Now that we've created our schedule, we'll go ahead and create an example exception. Our exception will be New Year's Day. And on New Year's Day, working time throughout the day will be considered as overtime. Now that we've created our exception hours, we are ready to plug them in to our service schedule. And now that we have our schedule, we are able to plug them into our employees. I'll go ahead and do that now for the rest of the employees in my system. Having completed these initial administrative steps, I can now go to the sitemap and set up my service region. Clicking on Service Region List, I can create a new service region. Service regions can be hierarchical, but this example will be one single flat region. I can plug in a schedule, choose a time zone, and an engine, which we'll talk about later. I'll save my service region and now I can begin the task of putting employees in the service region. The easiest way to do this is through administration user employees. I can go to my employees and the more info tab, sorry, the service details tab and choose the service region. I'll repeat that for each of my employees. Returning to the sitemap and choosing dispatch board, I can now see when I select a service region that my employees are visible. As a simple test, I will create an unscheduled activity for my service region with a duration of 90 minutes and for an existing account. Drag and drop shows the item about to be dropped. When I drag and drop the item, an error message appears informing me that I haven't published and activated the necessary workflows. So I'm going to go ahead now in administration business process and activate the various workflows required for this step. Having done that behind the scenes and refreshing the page, I will observe that there's a slight problem with my dispatch board. Now only one employee appears. I can repick the, the service region, but the same thing happens. This happened a couple of times during our demo process and the only solution we found was to quite simply log off and log back in. 
Looking in the console, we were able to see a number of errors, none of which appeared to be related to this particular feature, just some simple 404s at this stage. So we abandoned and logged off and logged back in, and everything seemed to happen all right after that. So we return to the dispatch board now and hopefully see the correct employees in our service region. So we can now drag and drop an unscheduled activity onto our dispatch board. Let's drop it here. Dragging and dropping produces a green bar with the default color scheme and a tool tip with the default contents. Both of those can be customized. So we have set up a basic dispatch board functionality now. We can use the different views, four hour, two hour, one hour, half hour, and quarter hour segments in order to display the data in different ways. But we're also going to look at, on the left hand side of the page, where you can see the list of employees, the various other columns of information that are vis not necessarily visible when you first use the dispatch board. Specifically, we'll look at assignment score, distance calculation, and wireless coverage. Each of these corresponds to a button at the top of the dispatch board. In order for assignment score to be functioning, we need, of course, to create at least one assignment rule in respect of the activity assignment object and add our employees as candidates so that we can evaluate their capability to undertake an activity. So I'm going to go to the sitemap, administration assignment, and quickly set up an assignment rule, which for demonstration purposes will only have one object and two criteria. I'll put it in the default rule group and drill down now to create the criteria. We'll add two criteria, one in respect of a compare to object criteria for the activity type and the activity type we will choose, we'll choose a couple from the very long list of activity types available. such as depot repair with a score of 10 points and birthday call with a score of 5 points. We'll add a second criteria of type compare object to person and for this we'll use the product because our activities will be associated with service requests which are service requests about particular products. We'll choose compare object to person we'll set up a score for that later but for now we'll say that everybody is a candidate and that everybody above the minimum score of zero should be considered as a candidate. Of course, in real life, you'll need to create a rather more apt assignment rule. Return to the assignment rules list and release the new set of rules so that the cache file is updated. You will, of course, in real life now need to verify that assignment management component group is functioning as it should be on your system. And, of course, if we're talking about compare object to person, you will also need to set up some assignment skills for each of your employees. During our demo, this is where we discovered another issue. Attempting to add assignment skills to employees, uh, through, we were unable to reach the assignment skills applet without having a timeout. Eventually, we opened the developer tools and were able to observe 
not just the 404 errors that we had previously, but also a unex unhandled exception in the JavaScript appearing to be from the physical renderer uh, with an uh, object not found or, or null. So we were unable to complete the assignment skills using the OpenUI client. We had to use plan B, and plan B was to use the high interactivity client. In the high interactivity client, we added the relevant as employee assignment skills of type product or whatever your assignment criteria correspond to that you set up in your assignment rule. To complete our demonstration, we went back to Siebel Field Service and created a service request. In fact, we have one created already here for our account. And we filled in all the relevant data, so for example, in the service details, the product and or asset that is being dealt with. Then we created an activity for this service request, and when we then go back to the dispatch board. When we're on the dispatch board, we're going to elongate the left-hand side, clicking the, the activity that we just created and clicking assignment score, we can see that now we have assignment scores displayed for our relevant employees. Selecting an activity in the lower applet and clicking assignment score causes assignment manager to run against any valid rules for the object and provide the assignment scores. The next part of our rapid prototype will involve the Calculate Distance button on the dispatch board. To keep it simple, to make this work, we're going to need to have, for each account that has a service activity, we'll need to have at least one valid address. So I'm going to go ahead now and modify this address to make it a valid one. It can be more complicated than this since accounts can have service locations and each employee will have a starting location at the beginning of the day, for example. So when you ask to calculate the distance, it could be, if it's the first activity, it could be from the employee start location to the account. If it's the second or third, it could be from the current account to the next service location, and so on. So I've added, or I've edited the address here to make it a valid address and I'm going to go now to the administration user employee and do the same for my employee. In the administration user employee service details I am going to add a new address not so far away from the address of the account but I equally I need now to create a second valid address. I'll save this new address And click OK. The second part of our administrative job, the second part of setting up the calculate distance, requires us to go to administration data zip code administration and enter one line for each of the zip codes that were mentioned in our addresses. So this was the customer address. And using whatever tools you have to hand, find the latitude and longitude of each of the zip codes you're going to use in your demo. Once you have created two zip codes, as I have done, you can create any addresses that share the same city, state, and zip code, and Siebel will use the city state that will use the zip code to perform the calculation. So I'm going to go to the dispatch board now. I'm going to stretch the left-hand side of the page. I'm going to select the activity that has all the necessary data and click Calculate Distance. You will notice that Siebel User has four. It is indeed approximately 4.2 miles between these two locations. The other values are indicative of missing data, such as a missing start location or invalid address but otherwise you'll see that the journey time is not too far off 35 minutes and not too far off 4 point something miles.
Returning now to our dispatch board, Wireless coverage, when you have a user selected, displays Y or N depending on whether a ping to their wireless device is successful or not. Documentation is extremely scarce, five lines by my count, but at least that's what it does. Just before we reach the end of this demo, we should also point out that there are user preferences in respect of the display of the dispatch board. The user preferences can make the dispatch board easier to read by changing the color of the objects and of the text that is displayed. As you can see, I have different colors available for activity priority, activity status, and activity type, and I can choose the major and minor color scheme as well as the object that will be the color basis for the grid. Making a few changes, I'll still have to make a few more changes because I've not got a very good color scheme. I have no eye for design. And we can see that a significant improvement has been had by showing our objects now with an orange background instead of a green background and blue text. So we now have a pretty much up and running simple dispatch board demo with drag and drop of our look I'll try again with drag and drop of our activities let's do it one more time just for fun there we go drag and drop thank you of our activities with a decent color scheme with uh, automatic assignment scores calculation of distance not bad for a 17 minute demo I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough and I hope it revealed a few little traps for you in Siebel IP15. I look forward to seeing you in part two of this video when we'll discuss the scheduler. Have fun, see you soon.